So welcome to our lesson on isotonicity. Other students may call these types of problems sodium chloride equivalent problems. It's important in pharmacy compounding to understand how to make a product isotonic because isotonicity literally refers to something being equal tone, meaning that the number of particles in the drug fluid being given is the same as the number of particles in human blood and tears. By giving isotonic solutions, we prevent water movement inappropriately into and out of the red blood cells. Now, if you don't remember this from basic chemistry, we know that 0.9% normal saline is an isotonic solution with human blood and tears. So when we're compounding drug solutions, we want to eventually get their isotonicity to be equivalent to this 0.9% normal saline product. And that's often done by adding sodium chloride to our compound. The problem is the other drugs in that compound also are parts. They're, they're literally particles. And so we have to make adjustments for those. We can't simply only use sodium chloride. And that's why people call these quote unquote sodium chloride equivalent equations. Now a lot of students do get confused by how these calculations work, but I've broken it down into three easy steps that work every time. And if you follow these steps, I think you'll find you get a lot less confused. Step number one is you're going to be given a compounded prescription and it's always going to have a total volume. So pretend you're just making a normal saline solution. If you had only sterile water for injection and uh, solid sodium chloride to add, how many grams of sodium chloride would you need to add to that volume of solution in order to achieve a 0.9% solution? And that's done by easily multiplying the total volume of the solution you're making by either 0.9 grams per 100 mils or I like to use 0 0.009 grams per 1 mil. Those are just simply ways of expressing 0.9%. Once you've completed step one, you move on to step two. Step two is figuring out how many grams of sodium chloride equivalents the other drugs in that compounded product are contributing to the total isotonicity of the product. For this, each drug that's in the compound will be um, assigned what's called a sodium chloride equivalent value or an E value. And so the way you figure out these equivalent weights is you simply multiply the weight of the drug in the compound by its E value, and that tells you the equivalent weight of sodium chloride. What can get tricky about step two is every compounded prescription doesn't give you the um, amount of drug to be added neatly in a weight, such as a gram or a milligram. Sometimes it expresses it in percent strength or ratio strength. In those cases, you just have to remember to convert to grams first. And then step three, to do the final solution of the problem, you simply subtract the answer you achieved in step two by the answer um, that you got in step one, essentially taking the total, subtracting the equivalents, and that gives you your final answer on how much sodium chloride to add to the product. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Here we have a problem asking how much sodium chloride should be added to make an isotonic solution of ephedrine. So remember, step one is figure out if I was only making a normal saline solution, what would I need? In this case, we've been asked to make a 90 milliliter solution. So we start with our 90 milliliters. We multiply by the 0.9% sodium chloride concentration, which I'm going to express as 0.09 grams per mil. And then we find out that if this was only a sodium chloride solution, we would add 0.81 grams of sodium chloride um, to purified water in order to make a normal saline solution. But we now have ephedrine in the mix, and ephedrine is going to take away equivalents of that sodium chloride. So how do we do this for ephedrine? Well, in this case, we're lucky it's given in grams. So with ephedrine for step two, we have 0.6 grams of ephedrine. We're going to multiply by its E value, given to us as 0.23, and we find out that the ephedrine replaces 0.138 grams of that sodium chloride. So remember then, step three is simply subtracting the two to get to a final answer. So if the total amount we needed was 0.18 grams, but the ephedrine actually replaces 0.138 grams worth of that, that ends up equaling 0.138 grams of sodium chloride that would still need to be added to the solution to make it isotonic. 
Now, for a final check, I'm going to look at my problem and see how it asked me to answer. And I notice here that it did ask me to answer in milligrams. Therefore, if I was typing in my answer on NAPLEX or on a quiz, I would have to make sure to convert that 1.38 grams to being 138 milligrams. Let's go ahead and look at yet another example. This one is essentially asking us to do the same thing, make an isotonic solution with sodium chloride. However, there are two different drugs in this solution, and they're not given to us neatly in grams, but rather in ratio strength. But this is no big deal. You still follow the same steps. So step one is, what if I was only making a normal saline solution? Well, here we go. We're being asked to make 1.5 liters. I like working in milliliters, so that's 1,500. So 1,500 milliliters times our 0.9% expresses 0 0.009 over 1. That ends up equaling 13.5 grams. So if we are going to make 1.5 liters of normal saline solution, we would have to use 1 point, or rather 13.5 grams of sodium chloride. However, we have two drugs that are contributing to some of that, genomycin and benzalkonium. So for step two, we just simply have to do two steps. We have to calculate the sodium chloride equivalents for each individually. And again, because the genomycin concentration is a percent concentration, we still have to start with our 1,500 mL solution. In this case, that solution is going to be 1% genomycin, which means 1 gram over 100 mL. And then we simply multiply by the E value of genomycin, which is 0.05, to find out that the contribution from genomycin is the equivalent of 0.75 grams of sodium chloride. Let's do the same for benzalkonium. Again, it's a ratio strength. So we have to start with our total mils of solution, multiply by benzalkonium's ratio strength. 1 to 1,000 means 1 gram over 1,000 milliliters. Again, multiply by its E value, which is 0.16, given in the problem. And we find out that the benzalkonium contributes 0.24 grams of sodium chloride equivalents. Step three is still then the same. You're going to subtract the answers that we got in step two from the answer in step one. So in this case, we have 13.5 grams total that we need. However, that's being replaced somewhat by the benzalkonium and genomycin. So we can express it this way. And you solve to find out that the total amount of sodium chloride needed is 12.51 grams. And in this case, it did ask for our answer in grams, so no further conversion is necessary. So that's really how simple these problems are. Now, one thing that might happen is NAPLEX and other uh, calculations books and other compounded products may actually ask you to make a solution isotonic with something other than sodium chloride. Boric acid is the most common substance, and this does sometimes confuse students. But don't worry, the process is still the same. Steps one through three do not change. You still do the exact same process. It's just that we have to add a step four. Step four is, well, we figured out how much sodium chloride we would have to add to make the solution isotonic in step three, but now how do we convert that to whatever we're being asked to actually make it isotonic with? And you do that by simply dividing the answer you got in step three by the E value of whatever drug you're supposed to use to create the isotonic solution. Now, the reason you divide by the E value and not multiply is because of this equation right here. In step three, we've already solved for the weight of NaCl. Step four, we're now solving for the weight of the drug. And therefore, you can see that you have to divide. So let's go through an example of this. In this case, we're being asked to uh, solve for boric acid. Now, even though boric acid is in here as a QS, that could easily say NaClQS. Don't think of the boric acid as an active drug. It's just simply what we're going to use to make the solution isotonic. Step one doesn't change. What if we were only making a normal saline solution? So I have 15 mils, my 0.9% solution. And this ends up equaling 0.135 grams of sodium chloride that would be needed if this was only a normal saline solution. Step two, again, is the same. What does the drug contribute? In this case, we have atropine, and it's given as a percent strength. So we start with our 15 mils times the percent strength of the product, 1.2 grams over 100 mils, times the E value of the atropine, which is 0.13. And we find out that the atropine contributes 0.0234 grams. Step three again stays the same. We're going to solve as if we were solving this for sodium chloride. Our answer in step one 
We subtract from that our answer in step two, and we find out that we would need 0.11 grams of sodium chloride to make this isotonic. But again, we're being asked to make it isotonic with boric acid. So how do we get from step three to boric acid? We simply take our answer from step three, divide by boric acid's E value, which is 0.5, and we find out that the answer is 0.22 grams of boric acid. So that's it. It's really just three easy steps, sometimes a fourth. And I think that if you go through these problems on your own and apply these steps to the practice problems you have in the various resources available to you, you'll become an expert on solving these types of problems in no time.